Hello, Abby. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine your hands? No. Note that the patient is comfortable and in a good position for examining the hands. There are many signs to see on inspection. Erythema in acute inflammation. Synovitis can produce swelling of the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. Look for deformity, such as arachnodactyly in Marfan syndrome, or a rotational deformity after phalangeal fracture. Consider mallet, boutonnier, and swan neck deformities. Dupatrin's contracture can cause fixed flexion of the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the ring and little fingers. Look for the subluxation and deviation of the wrist and metacarpophalangeal joints seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Look also for extra-articular signs of disease, such as small muscle wasting, vasculitis of the fingers, palmar erythema, or nail changes in psoriasis. Check the proximal extensor surface of the forearms for rheumatoid nodules. It's going to feel along your fingers. Let me know if it's sore. Palpate along each finger for swelling or tenderness. Hard swellings are normally bony outgrowths called osteophytes, characteristic of osteoarthritis. These are called hebidens or Bouchard's nodes when they occur at the distal interphalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints respectively. Hard swellings may also be due to mucous cysts or rarely to tumours. Soft swellings suggest synovitis. Detect synovitis in the interphalangeal joints by gently pressing with your thumb and index finger above and below the joint to detect sponginess. Palpate around the wrists for swelling or tenderness. Osteophytes at the thumb carpometacarpal joint can cause squaring of the wrist. Just going to gently squeeze your hand again. Let me know if it's sore. Gently squeeze across the metacarpal heads to test for sponginess or tenderness. Palpate the flexor tendon sheaths in the hands and fingers to detect local swellings or tenderness. Also feel for thickening in the palmar fascia. If you detect any swelling, look for triggering or locking during extension of a flexed finger. Next, we examine movement in the wrist and hands. You just make a fist for me and straighten your fingers out. To detect crepitus, place your index finger across the dorsum of the patient's fingers while they flex and extend them. And now I'd like you to bring your hand up like that and then down and from side to side. And the same on Active this movements of the wrist but be aware that gravity is contributing to the flexion. And from side to side. And make a fist for me, please. With the fingers flexed, look for the valleys in between the knuckles. These can be lost in the swelling of synovitis. And now can you stretch your fingers out? Lack of full extension of one or more fingers may indicate tendon rupture. And I'd like you to squeeze my Test fingers. grip strength with two of your fingers inserted into their palm from the thumb side. And now touch each finger with your thumb, like so. Thumb opposition for pincer grips to demonstrate fine motor function in the hand. And just let me move your fingers. Investigate flexor tendon sheath abnormalities by passive movements of the fingers to see if you can elicit triggering or crepitus. 
Triggering is caused when a localized tendon swelling jams in one of the so-called pulleys that guide the flexor tendons. And the same on this hand. The finger will tend to jam in a flex position resembling a gun trigger and requires an external or passive extending force in order to straighten. And now can I ask you to press your hands together like that and make a prayer sign? This is a good test for the range of passive wrist extension. And now flex them the other way. And extension. Look for symmetry of their elbow and shoulder positions. The normal range is 90 degrees in each direction. Thank you very much.